Okay. Things I wish Jesus hadn't said. Matthew 10, 32 to 40. Let me begin by saying, Baruch Haba. Welcome to each of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Yahushu HaMashiach, Jesus our Christ. Now I want to share with you some statistics before we get into a serious study here. This is uh, in an average lifespan, that's 70 years or more. The average American will spend three years in meetings You'll spend 14 years watching television. You'll make 1,911 trips to McDonald's. Some of you have to be doing more than that for me because I don't go there at all. But anyway, you're going to spend over $7,000 in different vending machines. You're going to catch in your lifetime 305 colds. Nice. You're going to be involved in six motorcycle, or um, not motorcycle, but accidents, motor vehicle accidents. If you're a man, you're going to be hospitalized eight times. And if you're a woman, 12 times. You're going to spend 25 years of your life sleeping. You're, now here's the best part. You're going to consume over 35,000 cookies and 1,500 pounds of candy. You're going to spend over $100,000 in your lifetime on food. And this is, this is really, for all you dieters, you're going to eat 164,250 slices of bread, oh. or its equivalent, which is approximately 10,265 pounds, or a little over five tons of bread. Wow. wow. And you're worried about your weight, right, you know? All right, those are interesting. And then I saw something on uh, Facebook this last week that I have to share with you. It says, consider these three things. Cows, right? The Constitution and the Ten Commandments. Cows. Is it just me or does anyone else find it amazing that during the mad cow epidemic a few years ago, our government tracked that disease to a single cow that was born in Canada and right to the stall where she slept in the state of Washington. They even tracked her calves to their stalls. But they're unable to locate 11 million illegal aliens wandering around in our country. Maybe we should give each of them a cow. Right? <laughs> they said, and consider the Constitution. They keep talking about drafting the Constitution for Iraq. Why don't we give them ours? It was written by a, a lot of really smart guys, and it has worked for over 200 years, and we're not using it anymore, so let's just yeah. get it to our end. That's not funny. <laughs> That's true. And find me the Ten Commandments. And the real reason that we don't have the Ten Commandments posted in our courthouses is this. You cannot post Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, and thou shalt not lie in a building full of lawyers, judges, and politicians. That's right. Because that would create a hostile workforce for them, right? A work environment. All right, let's get serious now. I want you to pretend that the government is videotaping you right now. And they have been since the very moment that you woke up this morning. Well, that's kind of scary, isn't it? Well, that's not all. 
because tomorrow you and Jesus are going to sit down and we're going to view that video together. Now that's scary. Matthew 10, 32, 40 says this. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. And whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I've come to the earth to bring peace. I did not come to bring peace, but the sword. To turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be in his own household. And anyone who loves his mother or his father more than me is not worthy of me. And anybody who loves his son or his daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Wow. Can we take those words literally? And when I read those words, a sense of uncomfortable ability comes over me. It's, it's profoundly uncomfortable. But Christ has the right to shock us to the core with these teachings that we don't like to hear. He is Lord, and he has the right. Listen, folks, this is tough stuff. Jesus isn't pulling any punches here. This is uncensored stuff. And this is Jesus Christ telling us how it is and how it will be for those who take him seriously. There are those among us who might say, hey, pastor, I don't need to go to church. I don't need to go to Bible study. I don't need to go to Sunday school. I don't have to because I don't take the Lord seriously. And we build things around the way in which we, as individuals, view life. And we want life to be lived around our strong personalities rather than around his. In Matthew 5.39, for an example, he says, if someone strikes you on the right cheek, then turn to him the other one. Come on, Jesus, what does that mean? The world has been divided. They want to shut up his message. And to shut it up and shut it down and shut it out. And Jesus was talking about witnessing here. If they reject it and slap you, keep on preaching. And when Christ calls people, to seriously be his disciples. He wants us, in the words of the apostle, to wear a helmet of salvation, to wield the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Do not shut up. Do not shut down and shut out. But to be people who speak for him and will stand for him. Now, there's a ton, a ton of boredom in our churches today. The reality is that the stuff we've heard so many times sometimes misses the adventure that is staring us in the face. In this world that puts all Christians on the defensive and would quiet us and shut us up and shut us out, Jesus calls for men and women to boldly take up the sword. Now, those are some pretty tough words. I tell you, this is strong stuff that Jesus is talking to us. And I tell you, tell you the truth, there is nothing in all of my life that is more important than my relationship and the acknowledgement that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I long for that day when Yahushua, Jesus, will say, Father, this is George. 
George acknowledged me before people. Father, I know him and I love him. Father, this is George. Put your own name there, beloved, because that hopefully someday you'll hear those words. Give your whole life, all your heart to him. Let him make you a new person. He wants to fill you with the joy and the peace that you've always longed for. And let me assure you, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you your sins. And it's going to cost you your pride and your arrogance. It's going to cost you your own will. But in turn, he's going to give you a new heart, a new outlook, and he's going to accept you into his kingdom. Your past will be forgotten. It doesn't matter how many people are videotaping you. He's going to make you a brand new creation. Now, some folks have come to church almost all their lives, but they've never came to that experience, this encounter with God. They've never really surrendered their heart or their life to him. Now, if that be you this morning, this is your moment with God. It may never come again in your life quite like this. Surrender all to him. Receive the reward of eternal life. And that's the Spirit's message to us this day. And by the way, a couple of weeks ago, somebody asked me, he says, uh, Pastor, are you still going to have church outside after daylight savings time? And I told them this story because it's so cool. A city slicker stopped at a rural gas station. It was about 5 o'clock at night. The sun was beginning to set. And as this grizzled old station attendant pumped the gas, the city slicker casually commented, I sure hate it when daylight saving time's in and we lost that hour of daylight, don't you? And the old guy replied, well, son, out here it stays light until it gets dark. <laughs> and so it don't make much difference. <laughs> I love that. So love one another, pray for and forgive one another always, and do it swiftly. swiftly. All right. Worship team, come on up.